What's up guys, it is us here, welcome back to our channel. Today is a day of problems. Of course problems not about world, politics or etc, but about trusses. Oh, how much we love this topic. Before starting, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button below. Now let's start. In trusses, it is necessary to determine the force in each of its members. They are method of joints, method of sections and the graphical method. Most used methods are method of joints and sections, so we're gonna solve problems related to them. First is the method of joints. As the name suggests, it is finding unknowns joint by joint. You take one joint, find unknowns and move on to the next joint. Simple as that. But be careful with starting from the joint that you can find unknowns. I mean, in each joint the number of unknowns must not exceed 2 because for each joint we have two equilibrium equations. This is our example and we were asked to find reactions in each member and find whether that member is in tension or compression. Before solving for each joint, first find support reactions by using three equilibrium equations. If we take moment about A, this 500 Newton produces moment in clockwise direction so it is negative and By in counterclockwise direction. From this, By will be equal to 500 Newton. If you write sum of total Fx is 0, we have only two forces in x direction, they are 500 Newton and Ax, both of them are positive. From this I get minus 500 Newton for Ax. With third equation which is total Fy is equal to 0, if I substitute 500 for By into the equation, I find that Ay is equal to minus 500 Newton. After finding support reactions, I will write them in free body diagram, and for negative ones, in this case Ax and Ay, I will change directions instead of writing minus sign in front of them. Then the easiest part comes, finding reactions at joints. We will start with joint B. You can start with whichever joint you want. First, I check if I can find unknowns. I have two equations and I have two unknowns, so answer is yes. I want to note that every time I assume unknowns to be tension. Tension is shown like this where arrow points away from joint, but compression is on the other hand points toward joint. Members in tension are denoted by positive sign, compression negative. If our assumption of tension for unknowns is incorrect, our answer will be negative, meaning that result is compression. Remember that a member in compression pushes on the joint and a member in tension pulls in the joint. By writing equilibrium equation for x direction I have 500 Newton and component of FBC in x direction. From this I get minus 707.1 Newton for FBC. If you remember, negative sign meant that our member is subjected to compression. If I write equilibrium equation for direction y, I get positive 500 Newton for FBA, meaning that it is tension. Let's correct our directions here. Arrow points towards the joint B because FBC is compression. Forces on the same member will be equal in terms of direction and magnitude. If one of them is tension, other one will always be tension. Joint A is a lot simpler because we already found FAB which is 500 Newton. To find the last unknown it is enough just to write equilibrium equation for x direction and from that we find FAC as 500 Newton as it is positive it will be tension. In joint C all members are known because we found them when solving joints B and A. As I noted if force on the other end of the member is compression second force will also be compression. And this is final free body diagram of our truss with indications of tension and compression members. You see that if joint is subjected to compression, member will also be subjected to compression. Same things for tension as well. So we learned the method of joints. Second method is be careful how to get girls with statics knowledge. <laughs> of course joking man. Second method was method of sections. Maybe you wonder why there are two methods or more than that. What are differences? If we need to find the force in only a few members of truss, in this problem, 
they are GE, GC, and BC members, we use this method. It is based on the principle that if the truss is in equilibrium, then any segment of the truss is also in equilibrium. The principle is that you cut truss with an imaginary section into two parts to determine forces in members. First, I will make a decision on how to cut, but it is so obvious, because I was asked to find GE, GC and BC members. Before splitting them into two parts, we have to find support reactions. By the way, A is pin and D is roller support. If I take moment about point A, this 400 produces clockwise moment so it is negative and it is multiplied by a perpendicular distance which is 3. 1200 Newton also produces negative moment about point A but dy counterclockwise which makes it positive. After solving this equation I find dy as 900 Newton. Let me remind you that if you have any problem understanding these solutions, make sure to watch our previous videos where you can find about equilibrium equations, moments and forces in detail. For x direction we have positive 400 Newton and positive ax. It is so simple to solve, I get minus 400 Newton for ax. For total fy, there are three forces in total, positive dy, negative 1200 and positive ay. I get ay as 300 newton from this equation. After finding support reactions, I'm gonna get rid of the minus sign if there is one and write support reactions down. So far, so good. Then there comes our splitting part. I showed where I cut in blue colors here. This is free body diagram of our cut section. As these forces are on same member, their opposite force will also be equal to them. After dividing into two parts, I can work with any of them, but I choose left part because there are less forces, meaning that we will simplify our calculations. Even if you solve for right one, you will get same results for member reactions. This is the free body diagram of chosen one. If I take moment above G point, by the way, I do this because I will cancel two forces on member G instantly, thus decreasing process of calculation, and also there are two unknowns in member G. FBC produces counterclockwise moment about G point, 300 and 400 produce clockwise moment, so they are negative. After solving this equation, I found FBC as 800 Newton. So, this means that BC member is subjected to 800 Newton tension. If you write equilibrium equation that total Fy is equal to zero, I can find FGC easily because FGC is only unknown there. Y component of FGC will be FGC times 3 over 5 from this triangle. How we got this? To learn them in detail watch our video about force. Solving this equation, I get 500 Newton for FGC, which is tension. Finally, write last equilibrium equation down, which is total Fx must be zero. We have negative 400, positive FBC, FGE, and X component of FGC, which is FGC times 4 over 5. The only unknown here is FGE, piece of cake. FGE is equal to minus 800 Newton. Don't forget that minus sign means that it is compression. So it is end of our lecture. I hope guys that you really enjoyed this video. Leave comments below what do you think on this. Our next video will also be solving problems. Problem solving is a very important to grasp the idea of any subject. The more you solve, the faster you learn. Of course, sometimes <laughs> there can be exceptions. See you guys, take care of you and your loved ones.